Anchors up. Sales at full. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing all right, Jared. Doing all right. We are a week closer for the season to start. We are. Um, I mean, we're all, I mean, we mean, we've, we've been a week closer every week, though. I think, I think we're. Doesn't make it any less true. Right. But it doesn't make it especially noteworthy, I think, is my point. Yes, it is. I, I, I think I think the better way of saying it is this is our last. This was our like this week, last weekend was I want to say this weekend is, but last weekend was for anyone listening to this. The last week without college football. We have week zero next week. This week, this weekend. Then Ohio State plays the weekend after that. Oh, yawn real quick. Get that yawn Jeez, out. Jared. I yeah, I, I got up early this morning. I don't know what to tell you. Um, All right. We, we, we've been kind of the release it of this off. episode. We are 12 days away. Yes. We've been kind of putting it off here a little bit just because of other news and realignment, conference realignment kept coming up here. But let's get back into some camp news, Jared, or we'll we'll spend our episode today talking just anything and everything about the camp here what we've heard what we expect here and we'll we'll start off by the the captains here Ohio State named their captains over the weekend here or late last week and they're going back to three captains that hasn't yeah. happened in what like 10 years 14 15 years I think it was I read somewhere that they had like 10 straight. It was 10 straight years of six or more captains. Uh, and and I, I think a lot of people criticized Urban Meyer, who, who kind of started doing that. And Day had, you know, had kept doing that um, for like watering down the captain hood. And. Uh, I, I don't know. I'd, I'd be interested in hearing what everyone has to think about it. Um, do we prefer less captains? Do we prefer keeping it more exclusive, uh, a, a tougher, a tougher ring to grab? To me, Jared, I, to me, at least it doesn't really matter if it's three or six. I mean, if it's six people and there's three others that's really deserving of being named a captain. Sure. But to me, it doesn't really matter. But the three captains, though, this year, uh, Tommy Eichenberg, Cade Stover, and the Swiss Army knife himself, Xavier Johnson. Xavier Johnson also getting that block O. Yes, sir. I, think, I think he. I think we had named he was, a few he was like people. one of like four or five people we were kind of we had listed here of potentially getting that block O. But I think I think most people thought that Xavier was going to get that block out. Yeah. Uh, uh, as Kyle said, like I wouldn't have been shocked if it had been, uh, for example, Tommy Eichenberger, Cade Stover, Steel <laughs> Chambers. I, I think I would not have been shocked. Um, there, there were a few guys who I would have sort of had on that short list. But when, you know, the news came, the news dropped that it was Xavier Johnson. It was, not super surprising. Yep. 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 Tommy Cade steal Xavier prime candidates. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. <clears throat> All right, Jared, let's get into some more. Let's get into the camp news. And the biggest thing here is still, still waiting for that, that announcement from, from coach day here on who is going to be the starting quarterback here. Now, yep. I do want to remind folks at home that there are other elite programs out there that are still haven't named their starting okay. quarterback as well. Okay. Not where I thought you were going with that. <laughs> where? What do you got? Who, who you got? Yeah, Alabama. Yep, Alabama is the one there. Uh, Alabama doesn't. I don't. I'd be shocked if they... Alabama is not a great comparison if you're trying to come about this as good news, because I don't think 
I, I don't know. I don't know how Alabama didn't get one of the better transfer portal guys this season. That is a good question. I they are in a bad way at the quarterback position. Austin, I don't know why I was trying not to just say it, but yeah, that's what I was essentially trying to say instead of just yeah i i think they have i think they have real quarterback issues so i don't know if that's the comparison kyle i want to make <laughs> if i'm being honest well i mean I, I thought a lot about this over the weekend here we could about, say that georgia just named theirs they did yep georgia did just name theirs but i, th I was been thinking about it a lot this weekend here jared is it really it is is a quarterback who hasn't been named yet the starter. Is it really a good thing or is it really just Ryan Day just isn't sure because he doesn't like what he sees too? I mean, it could be that he's not sure because he does like what he sees. I mean, it could be that too. Yeah. So this is uh, this is Ryan Day on 814, which is one week ago as this drops. They likes playing games for the media. I, I, I don't think so, but put a pin in that. We'll come back to it. Uh, Day said on the 14th, you'd like a sizable gap to name a starter for sure. It's hard to name someone when there isn't a significant gap. So we're looking for someone to emerge. Uh, there's been good things. There's been things um, that they want back. And I appreciate the competitiveness right now. They're going at it every day. We're not ready to name a starter right now. So the competition will continue this week. What does any of that mean? The, the, the one, I think the one takeaway there to me is there's a size. He's looking for a sizable gap. And right now there's not a sizable gap. What does sizable gap mean? I don't know. That's not a, that's not a, it's not a, it's not a unit of measurement. Like what, what, what on earth does that even mean? I, I don't know. You don't know. Ryan Day probably doesn't even know. Um, I think it just means that they have two competent quarterbacks at least. And of course the fear comes in. Does that mean both guys are really good? Or does that mean neither guy is quote unquote, taking it. See Supreme Court de definition on pornography. Thank you, Esquire. Uh, it's actually, you know, yeah, you know, it when you see it, you don't got to be a lawyer to know that one, Esquire, you know, it when you see it. And honestly, that's probably fair. Um, so, you know, you look at McCord, you look at Brown. Um, uh, so let me say this. If you have a dog in this fight and you aren't directly related to either of them, you're wrong. You haven't seen them play. If, if you are like hardcore team Brown or team McCord, you're wrong. You have no right to be sure. And, and I know that there's, at least one very loud contrarian out there in the Ohio state sphere. Who's gone all in on Devin Brown. Uh, and that, that dude's a, that dude's a clown. Everyone knows it. Um, so we, we don't got to worry about that. Um, if, if you are hardcore for one player or the other, you're wrong. Cause you, you don't know. And, Kyle and I have basically defaulted to Kyle McCord for a long time. Um, and the reason I've defaulted to Kyle McCord for such a long time is, is because he has that extra year. And I think that's incredibly important, especially in a Ryan day system. And when it, when it comes down to it, I think Devin Brown would have had to have stolen the job and, to me, if there's not a quote unquote sizable gap, then that probably means he hasn't stolen the job. So this That's isn't me. Point. This isn't me <clears throat> pulling for Kyle McCord. Uh, this isn't me trying to like. I, I, I don't know. And ultimately, I'm just going to trust whatever Ryan Day picks. But. 
like I said, I, I'm not I'm not choosing one way or the other. Um, but I've I've basically called Kyle McCord from the beginning, and I don't not yet seen a reason to move off of that. Um, and then you have people be like, oh, then why is it taking so long? Why is it taking so long? Why haven't they named a starter yet? Why haven't they named a starter yet? I expect, I anticipate that the starter will be named uh, either on Monday or Tuesday. And I, I know Ryan Day has some press availability coming up. I believe the... I believe the quarterbacks specifically have media availability coming up on Monday or Tuesday. I expect that will be the day that the starter is announced. And if we look at the past, looking for indicators here, if we look at the past, CJ Stroud in 2021 was not named the starter until August 21st. Was anyone shocked when CJ Stroud won the quarterback competition, or did we all kind of know that was coming? Because we, I think we all kind of knew that was coming, and yet wasn't named until August 21st. Fields... Yeah, it seems, it definitely seems really late. There's no there's no value in doing it early. <clears throat> yeah. By the way, Ryan Day, like I say, I expect it to happen this week. Ryan Day might wait wait till week one. Or, or, he may, he may, he, or he may do it just a couple hours after we release this episode. <laughs> Maybe. Ah, uh, the 2015 choice. Exactly. In 2015, Cardell Jones was named the starter. The post-national championship injured JT Barrett versus national championship winning Cardell Jones. Who's the incumbent? Who's going to get it? We didn't know until Cardell Jones strolled out onto the field on until September 7th. September. Yeah, until September. By the way, Fields, Justin Fields was not named the starter until August 19th. Are we starting to see a, a similarity in some of these in some of these patterns? And who who the hell was going to start if not for Fields? You know who, Jared? No, he had already left town. <laughs> uh, Fields swung for the king and hit that time. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's, um, he had already chased Martell out of town. Martell was gone. The fields was obviously going to be the quarterback, obviously going to be the quarterback. He was not named the starter until August 19th. Haskins, uh, actually th this one breaks trend. 2018 Haskins was named the starter on June 15th. Now that was a little different. A little different because Joe Burrow was the competition uh, and Joe Burrow. By the way, I just want to I, I always want to tell this story because I feel like this story is mistold a lot. Urban Meyer did not choose Dwayne Haskins over Joe Burrow. Joe Burrow told the coaching staff going into spring camp of 2015. Excuse me, 2018 of 2018. If I'm not the if you if I'm not named the starting quarterback at the end of spring camp, I'm going to transfer. Urban Meyer and staff did not name a starting quarterback at the end of spring camp. Yeah. And by the way, Austin says, which is fair. Austin, I totally agree. I, I hold nothing against Joe Burrow for any of this decision making or Urban Meyer, for that matter. I think it totally he had, he had to look out for himself. He obviously made the right call. At the end of spring camp, Urban Meyer was not ready to name a starting quarterback. Joe Burrow left. That's that's how that played out. Just so we're all clear, because people like act like people like to tell that story differently that, you know, Haskins was chosen or whatever. Um, anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, Cardell Jones, uh, we already talked about 2015. We didn't know he was a starting quarterback until he strolled out to the huddle on the 17th. And also, this one's a little bit different. On August 18th of 2014, 
it was announced that JT Barrett had become the official second string quarterback of the Ohio State Buckeyes. Uh, not long after Braxton Miller would re-injure the shoulder that he hurt in the Clemson game the year before. Um, a, a son, so making JT Barrett the starting quarterback for that year. So of the last five, if we count the backup announcement, which ended up being the starting announcement, I'm going to count it. Does it help my partially because it helps what I'm my what I'm saying here of the past five announcements? All of them happened between August 18th and August 21st. If it's announced on the 21st, we're just perfectly on schedule. If it happens on the 22nd, we're still pretty much just perfectly on schedule. So Wouldn't why is this dragging be, on? Be something? Why is this dragging on so long? Why is it yada, 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 yada? It's not. We're, we're perfectly on schedule. And by the way, uh, yep. Tony Gerdeman researched that and wrote it just to give proper credit. Um, he had a thing on Buckeye Huddle going back much further back into the 90s about when the starting quarterbacks were named. Everyone should go read it. So if you want to if you want to go further back than 2014, go go, go check out Tony Gerdeman. Um, final call, Kyle. This is our this is, your, this is our final call on this. I've I've had McCord because I've just felt like he's the default choice. I think if, it, if Devin Brown was going to unseat him, I, I think it. I, I I think that we would have heard more buzz about a a gap being created, and I think that he he has to win it. If it goes chalk, I think it's Kyle McCord. Um, I'm going Kyle McCord. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, I, I agree. I think I'm going to default to Kyle McCord as well right now. Now, yeah, it's. It, <laughs> yeah, that, I, I, I really don't know much else what to say other than it's just my gut feeling is going to be Kyle McCord. Now, if it's Devin Brown, all right, well, we roll. It, it, yep, let's roll. Let's roll the season, and we're all Devin Brown fans. Like, simple as that. Right. All right. Um, now, probably more important. Well, I mean, the quarterback announcement is very important, but I think om almost as important is the offensive line who's going to be protecting this quarterback, Jared. Yeah. Big offensive line news recently. Um, and by the way, just just so to go back to the quarterbacks a little bit. Uh, this uh, this was announced on the day that there was press availability for the offensive line. Weird how that happens. Um, if Austin Ward is audibly sobbing on tomorrow's the podcast, we'll know which way it went. Um, I, I have to stop listening to other podcasts this time of year so that I don't just start repeating and just sort of echoing uh, what they say, because it's it's just a thing that happens. Has his Austin chosen his Austin Ward chosen the side? I don't I don't know what he's been saying. Esqu Esquire. He's pro McCord. OK, so that's the thing. Like I'm I'm choosing because we're on a podcast and that's what we do here. But I I'm I'm happy to be wrong and, and roll with with Brown if it goes that way. Yep. Yep. All right. What, what else are you hearing about the. Uh offensive line big, here big news I'm out hearing, of the offensive hearing, line yeah here there's some foot flopping tackle going swap. around here tackle swap we got a tackle swap everyone everyone we got a tackle swap guys we got a tackle swap um josh fryer has been moved from left tackle to right tackle and uh newly dubbed jimmy jimmy simmons um whose name is also josh by the way but apparently we're going by Jimmy now. Uh, Jimmy is now at left tackle. Um, no, hey, Jared, hold on, Jared. Are any of the quarterbacks left-handed? Uh, no, either of these two are left-handed. Okay. <laughs> uh, I mean, Which Kyle, might have ex could have explained that. <laughs> it is not, it's not a bad observation. Aaron Oland, uh, who's not on the team yet, 
um, is, yes, he is, is left-handed. left-handed. Yes, yes, uh, that but is... he's not. He's not on the team yet, so that is correct. Tackle flip flops. Yeah. So, Kyle, thoughts? Jimmy Simmons now at left tackle. Josh Fryer at right tackle. Um, it is interesting that it's this late already that they're doing this. I would have thought that if they were going to flip flop, they would have done it earlier uh, in in fall camp here. So it's really, really interesting that they that they're flip flopping already or flip flopping this late. I mean, you say this late, but like this is their first, you know, Simmons was not around for the spring camp. They had to bring them in. They had to they had to play it out. They had to see how it fit. And then, you know, you still have a few weeks to get it to get it honed in. Um, I, I don't I don't think it's all that late. Um, he is a WM tackle. It is bad on OSU that he's the option. Um, he's mounted West. Gotcha. Um, I, I don't know that that's fair. Uh, I think that he's probably, you have, he has game experience, which Josh Fryer has very little. Uh, Simmons has pl- played and started an entire season. Uh, Fryer has like a start. Uh, the term uh, th- this is uh, this is Josh Fryer talking about Simmons. Freaky athleticism. Seeing him go up or is this? Jo- yeah, this is Josh Fryer. Josh Fryer. There's two. There's there's like four Joshes and two Fryers. So work with me, everybody. Um, Josh Fryer on Simmons. Freaky athleticism. Seeing him go up on a linebacker. It's kind of scary how he moves. Uh, let's add another fry to the equation. Yes, Kyle. Go, everyone go watch the new season of Futurama. It's uh, it's good. The. The point I'm trying to make here is that it's not fair to simply say, oh, he's a Mountain West tackle. Like sometimes the scouts miss. Sometimes dudes play late in high school. Sometimes guys develop late in high school. Sometimes they don't do the camp circuit. They don't come from a high profile high school that gets seen by scouts. Um, It's not fair to just be like, Eh, he's a he's from the Midwest or the Midwest, the Mountain West. He sucks. Um, this is what the transfer portal is for. Quite simply, this is just what the transfer portal is for. Um, you know, we could certainly talk about the program as a as a whole, right? Is it is it good for Ohio State? Is it, is it a good indicator for Ohio State? The Mountain West is better than the Pac-12. Well, it will be next year. <laughs> it will be next year. Um, yeah, I mean, it's not a good look for the program. Oh, the Pac-2 sucks, or I guess the Pac-4 sucks. I, the, I guess Stanford and Cal <laughs> lost that ACC vote, didn't they? Yep. That's a, uh, but Oregon and Oregon, or excuse me, uh, Oregon State and Washington State are going to be in the Mountain West. I, you can you can put that one down in pen. Point here is that it, I do think it's not a good look for the program that you go get a Mountain West left tackle uh, right tackle to come into your program and play left tackle. But like, we knew that already. This is why coach stud retired for for everyone listening to just the podcast version of that. I leaned really heavy into the air quotes. This is why coach stud retired. 
they were recruiting very poorly on the offensive line. We knew this already. We knew these gaps were coming. This is why Josh Fryer is here. Excuse me, not Josh Fryer. This is why Coach Fry is here. Too many fries. Too many fries, too many fryers, too many Joshes. Point is, is that like this isn't news. Th this was an issue. It's been addressed, but the the issues are still like in the pipeline. And that's why the transfer portal is good if you're Ohio State. It allows you to patch the holes that are a little bit further down the assembly line because you can't. It is very, very, very rare that you can just go get a freshman and have them play left tackle for you. Simmons has to prove you wrong. Weren't you on the Simmons like on the Simmons bandwagon there for a minute. Bringing him in, yes. But you want you liked him better at right tackles, I think what you're trying to say. Well, guess what, Coach Fry? But not to be the starter. Oh, he was going to be the starter immediately. The only thing I'm surprised by is that he's starting at left tackle. No, he was going to start immediately. Like... Like it's an indictment on Ohio State. It is an indictment on Ohio State. But again, it's an that that that's why Coach Stud retired. And like you can't just you can't go as much. You have to give Fry time. Offensive line is not wide receiver. You can't go get an amazing freshman wide receiver and plug him immediately into the offense. And then here we go. Yeah, I'm not saying it's Fry's fault. Uh, I am saying it's Day's fault. Uh, Day should have let Stud go sooner. Mm -hmm. Yep. Agreed. Yeah. He should have. All right. Anything else but, on the but offensive he did, line? But he did get rid of him. I think is the important part. Um, excuse me. He retired. Excuse me. Ryan Day's never fired a coach. Never. Not once. Somehow. Um. It Anything else on the offensive line or should we move on to the defensive side? Uh, Fryer on uh, Fr Fryer, when asked about the sh the switch, says, I think I'm a plug and play guy. I can play all five and I want no drop off when playing a different position. That's a that's a future. That's a future uh, blocko talking right there. Yep. Yep. Fastest, fa fastest route to getting a blocko is changing positions. <laughs> it's true. Uh, Simmons uh, about getting moved to left tackle. You just kind of, uh, you just kind of figure it out. Like I said, I'm going against some real dudes. Uh, Coach Fry talking about moving Simmons to left tackle. He says he's a more mature guy. When you uh, get these guys from the transfer portal, they've known college football uh, with the younger guys that came mid year. They're just first year guys. Uh, he's been in the locker room. He's played college football games. So I think the speed of the game is a little bit slower than an actual rookie. Luke Montgomery just needs to be one year older. Yeah, it would be really helpful if uh, Luke Montgomery had been born a year sooner. That would have been helpful. I agree. So, yeah, Kyle, I, no, I think we're ready to move to the D line. I, I still Hinsman has not yet been named the center, but I am anticipate. I'm still anticipating that's the case. Just mm -hmm. to throw yep. that out there. Agreed. Agreed. All right. Defensive line here. I know this was. Ask hard Luke Gast if you had a time machine. I I would probably not use it to uh, persuade uh, the parents Montgomery to um, make, you know, I'm. I, I'm not. I'm not. I'm just not, drop it. I'm, Jared. Not, I'm not finishing that sentence. I'm not, finish, I'm not finishing drop that it. sentence. All right. Uh, so the defensive line, uh, we very talented last year. A lot of, a lot of hype, a lot of hype, but they seem to have got thrown around a lot, especially in the later part of the year. And that definitely seems to be more of a focus this year. 
Uh, Coach Johnson said that the focus for the D-line this year is stopping the run, more cohesive and unified approach than last year. And and you see it you too. Say, um, you, you, you say uh, that they got thrown around a lot. Um, it, it seems to me, if you read through and, and watch a bunch of the player interviews with the defensive lines, um, a lot of this year's a lot of the, this year's guys are throwing around a lot of last year guys, which I mean, like straight under the damn bus. Mm-hmm. Like, like this, there's this. there's some there there are some interesting quotes in here. Mm-hmm. Like there's one anonymous defensive lineman. And you know, it's bad when when you got to tell Tony, hey, don't put my name on this quote. But <laughs> but but I don't want to name names. But this year's group is much more focused on playing as one. Reoccurring. If you go listen, watch, read the defensive line player interviews. They're talking about we aren't counting stats. He goes, uh, I, for, it was either JT or Sawyer. Um, I, for, I forget who I didn't write this one down said something along the lines of like, we met, we all met before the season started and said, none of our goals are going to be based off of individual stats. We're not worried about stats. Uh, We're going to play as a unit. We aren't going to be chasing stats, no individual players. We need to play as a unit. Like there there's the, the anonymous source, the anonymous quote from the defensive line came out and said it, although they didn't say who, uh, but there's a lot of like, there's a lot of, you know, unlike last year, we're not going to play selfishly. There's a lot of that. Um, And, you know, you've had, you had three big players leave the program. Uh, I, you know, I mean, Zachary Harrison left, uh, Javante Jean Baptiste left, uh, Vincent left. I, I, I don't know what to tell you beyond that. I've not, um, th- those are your three big players who left the program. I are, are, is it one of them? Is it two of them? Um, uh, is it all three of them? I don't know. Um, I think it's important to point out that JT probably played as many snaps as anyone else on the defensive line last year. Um, Sawyer was, you know, playing the Jack a lot, was on the field a lot last year. So they could be like, without saying it, saying us too. You know what I'm saying? Um, Maybe. <clears throat> So that, that, of, uh, that, that could be a, that that could literally be them saying we need to be better, you know. Um, so I mean, it's easy to speculate, but it's purely speculate. Yeah, speaking of uh, JT Um gives a lot of praise to uh, to Mike Hall, which you've you've uh, mentioned a few episodes ago ago about big expecting big things from Mike Hall Jr. this year. And and JT um, called Mike Hall the heart of the defensive line. Yeah, uh, I'm expecting huge, huge things from Mike Hall this year. And I think, um, I think likewise, too, I think we're, we should see huge things from uh, Jack Sawyer as well, too. He's actually getting his hands on the ground now where he's more comfortable, happy being on on the ground there for for coach Johnson there being able to rush from that end position there. So I think we should see a lot more from Jack Sawyer this year too. Yeah. And according to Sawyer, he had said something he had apparently had like, you know, like a post season interview with his coaches and they basically decided in those meetings that he's going to focus purely on the defensive and, you know, uh, Sawyer says, I feel comfortable being back at defensive end. Uh, that's what I wanted to do. And that's what they thought I was best at, too. Um, 
Austin says, I think Mike Hall has the best season of any defensive lineman, but will have no stats to show for it. And that is fine. Uh, it's entirely possible. Um, the there, you know, there's a there's a lot of fire coming from that. It was one of the more entertaining. Sometimes you watch these player interviews and it's all very dry and yada yada. Um, but if you're paying attention, there was a lot of undercurrent to a lot of it. Um, Larry Johnson um, was asked about the Jack position. Not Jack Sawyer, but the Jack position. <laughs> Very stone faced was just be like, the Jack comes from the linebackers. In a tone of next question. You know, <laughs> you hear someone who's like, next question. Someone asked about the Jack position. That's a linebacker thing. Next question. You know what I mean? Like it's. I I don't know. Like. I'm stuck between also kind of not liking the Jack position, but also being like you paid a defensive coordinator $2 million to come in here and redo the defense. Like how, how do you strike the balance between like trusting your $2 million defensive coordinator to do his job versus Letting Larry Johnson, who is a known, proven, amazing commodity, let him do his job. And and where do you strike that balance, I think, is an interesting challenge for Ryan Day. Hate that two of our main D coaches are obviously openly feuding. I don't think it's open, but it's also not totally not open <laughs> thinly veiled i think maybe is is maybe an okay way of saying that um i've said it before i'll say it again um i do think this is larry johnson's last year um so i think that is a issue that will solve itself um i know that he It, I I I was told that he told Sawyer and JT that, you know, he guaranteed them three years. So, you know, when he were, when he landed those two guys, he told them, you know, I'm giving I promise I'm giving you three years. It does not necessarily mean that it was only three years. We don't know that but we do know that he promised three years and that that ends at the end of this season. Whoever places LJ has some shoes to fill. Yeah, for sure. Um, and, and, I, and I think it's also worth acknowledging that like does robbing a defensive lineman in order to play linebacker and only having three down defensive linemen, does that work in the big 10? If it, even if it worked in the, in the big 12, which is very, you know, air raid E. Does that work in the big 10, which is not very air raidy? Not you know, this year, th Garrett. these are not, especially not this year with, with how great of offensive line and running backs you're, you're going to see this season. Yeah. It's, it's going to be a very classic big 10 this year. Um, so 90 90s style Big Ten, I think we're going to see this year. And I think we're going to see one of the more run focused offensive performances from Ohio State than we've seen in a, you know, th this side of JT Barrett. <laughs> yeah, that, and that's what that's what I've mentioned. Was it last weekend, last week's episode that whoever is going to be the quarterback, I don't think you're going to see big numbers from the uh, from the passing game because Ohio State's going to run the ball a lot more this year. And I think the offensive line is more conducive to toward it. Um, but it, but it, it would it will be hard to sideline the wide receivers too much. That's that's the issue. Um, defensive line, 
as we go off on a tangent and go back to the defensive line. Um, Ty Hamilton also seems to be talking, and I say this um, respectively, and I, and I say this um, happily. Ty Hamilton seems to also be talking a lot of shit. <laughs> like, I feel like Ty Hamilton's ready. I feel like Ty Hamilton's uh, out there talking shit, and I, and I like it, I think is what I'm saying. Um, Ty Hamilton's talking about, like, you know, we need to win games and not rely on the offense. We need shutouts. Uh, that, that one's an exact quote. We want shutouts. Um, Ty Hamilton also and, and Larry Johnson also among those talking about being more cohesive as a unit and not focusing on stats it's a thing you're hearing a lot from a very senior group of defensive linemen is a very old group of defensive linemen um, and you know, you see that maturity coming out in a lot of the quotes. Um, so it's one thing when you hear a freshman talking shit. It's another thing when you hear an upperclassman talking shit. Um, so they're being a lot of them are being real loose. Um, but still, like I said, talking shit. So I, I don't know. Um one of the more entertaining and also one of the more I feel positive watching sort of the group interviews, the the position group interviews, that is. I wish Speaking that of, experience was our offensive line. Speaking oh, of um, yeah, there's there's just not as much I mean, and again, that's why Simmons is you got your you got two you have two experienced guys on the left side now which is unfortunately like one year of experience for each of them. Uh, and one of them was not in big 10 play, but you at least have two, you, you, you have two experienced guys on the left side of the line now. So that does help. When was Jared, the last time Ohio state shut out an opponent? When was the last time Ohio state shut out an opponent? Oh, I um, forgot to, uh, nope. There was one before that. There was one before Rutgers. I mean, since Rutgers? Or, yeah. Is it Maryland? Nope. Um, was it Akron? It was not Akron. Cincy. Esquire said Cincy. It's, that's... Against Luke Fickle. Yeah, that they... Back in 2019, they they took it to Fick that year. They did. But, oh, especially they after were talking that, about putting it was Cincinnati especially after in the that first that game season. when, especially after that first game when, Ohio State let up 21 points to Florida Atlantic, and then they yeah. came around and shut out uh, Cincinnati was, the following year or the following game. That that was our famous um, don't ever bend, but sometimes spectacularly break defense <laughs> yes and then before and then before that one in 2019 it was 2017 against Rutgers yeah all right uh defensive so, yeah, line it's been a while it's been, it's been, a, it's a, been while. a minute it's been a minute all right let's let's go ahead and finish up one, talking one, about the one, one the final secondary here well one final note about the defensive line uh we talk a lot about a lot of the senior talent a lot of the older talent on this line um and and a lot of people will be talking um about you know there's a lot of there's a lot of good keep an eye on kenyatta jackson uh the hype around him in camp right now is outstanding it's it's the 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 hype around kenyatta jackson right now is loud and it's real I, maybe it's not a thing we see this year a ton. And if we do see it this year, it might not be until later in the season. Because like I said, there's a bunch of older guys in front of him. Um, might depend upon how bad uh, 
a boar's injury is and how much time he misses. Um, but keep an eye on Kenyatta Jackson. Mm-hmm. All right. The secondary here. We've seen we've seen some good. We've seen spurts of uh, greatness from the secondary last year, and I think there's some high expectations that they'll put it all together this year. With, um, but yeah, what what are we hearing here about about some of the new faces that we're seeing here? Some of the young young fellows that may see the the field here too. What are we seeing here? I didn't I didn't collect a ton of quotes for the secondary. Um, I almost just I wanted to carry this over to just once again say that the defense is talking a lot of shit and I like it. Um, Igbenosa said, "I can check Marv." <laughs> that that alone. I can check Marv. I mean, he's the best player in the country, but me and him go at it. (laughs) Denzel Burke, if I'm talking trash, I'm confident that whoever is in front of me, you're not doing a damn thing. Uh, He had I don't have this quote written down. I thought I did, but he had something like, you know, put me in press man in the boundary and let me be me was another quote he said. Um, uh, And and this is another one from uh, Igbenosa that I really liked. Um, This one, you know, specifically about what it says about uh, Sonny Styles. Um, When I got here in the spring, when I was on the field, I was asking Sonny, tell me everything I need to know about this play because I was confused. Uh, Now I have an understanding of the defense as a whole. He also talked about like compare and contrast um, Ole Miss. And he talks about how they have a lot more like pre uh, pre snap checks. There's a lot more pre snap reads and pre snap checks that take place at Ohio State versus Ole Miss, which I think is a interesting note. Um, But also just like Sonny Styles, who you know, in the spring should have been an early enrollee from high school. Like he should have still been in high school in the spring. Is already like has enough of everything down. That he's out there like telling other players what they need to be doing. On the field, Uh, just I feel like that says a lot about Sonny Styles. Um, I think it says, I think it, it helps sure up in my head that we're going to be seeing him play. Uh, I, I think he'll be playing a lot of that slot safety cover, safety slot corner, whatever the, you want to call that position. Um, I think we'll be seeing, and not that this is a, this, this is not an earth shattering prediction, I acknowledge, or I think we're going to be seeing a lot of styles on the field. If he's out there like telling other players how to be doing their job again, as someone who should still be in high school, as like I said, this quote was taking place in the spring. um, I think that says a lot. Once 60 year old white men rendering their clothes and wailing into the internet void about how much shit talking and swag is coming out of the defense. I want the you from the eighties walking off the bus each week. Cosign. <laughs> cosign. <laughs> I'll just say cosign. Hey, we do, we do play Notre Dame in a few weeks. So. Although the guys keep their nose pretty clean. I'll say this in a feel. It feels like we hear and a, granted a lot of this is just like Georgia players and speeding tickets acknowledged, but it feels like we've been hearing a lot about off off the field issues. Um, although Ohio State's normally pretty good at locking those down until like 
game week and then all of a sudden we learned about a bunch of suspensions so we'll see we'll see um mm-hmm. but yeah you, you know the guys have been i think as far as i know keeping their nose clean so um hopefully it's not uh hopefully it's not really catholics and convicts but maybe just catholics and you know, I really challenged myself to come up with something by the time I finished that sentence. What was um, it? Wasn't it? Wasn't it Catholics versus draft picks? Catholics versus that. That doesn't. I know. Doesn't do it for me, if I'm being honest. Um, I got nothing. I'm not going to try. I'm not going to try. I really I challenged myself to come up with something. I didn't get there. That's my fault. I'll do better next time. Um, Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? Oh, man, going straight into that, are we? Not even giving a leeway or, <laughs> or anything, just straight on there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> who put who on the spot this time? I know, right? <laughs> um, well, I did want to mention about uh, Sammy Sasso, the uh, wrestler for the Buckeyes. Uh, he was a victim of a shooting near, near campus uh, over the weekend here, but hearing good things that he's... He's going to make a full recovery and all that, but definitely a very scary thing. And hopefully he is that a recovers quickly. Watched home invasion, I think, is what I heard. Or I might um, be wrong. It, it just said that it was a I'm robbery a attempt. It was just a robbery attempt is all well, that. I, I may have turned robbery attempt into home invasion in my head. I may have done that. Um, yeah. yeah, no, it's... Yeah, I know, right? A robbery's a robbery. Uh, close your ears, Esquire. A robbery's a robbery. Um, uh, anything else in Kyle's corner, Kyle? No, I'm just. I'm getting. I'm getting. Uh, I'm really excited. It's. I'm starting almost to there. start. It's starting to feel it. You can. You can almost feel that football's going to be here, and. It, and yeah, it, there's week zeros this weekend, Jared. We'll we be, already have our first Sloopcast social yeah. screen lined up. Just about to mention that. So go at it, Jared. Go at it. <laughs> if you join the Discord server, and by the way, week zero, I'm 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 opening it up to everybody. I'm opening it up to everybody. Um, but um any week past that. Um you can for three dollars a month by the way the discord server is free so you can just join the discord server uh but for three dollars a month uh at the patreon tier in the discord server um we pick a game every week some it's sometimes it's been the ohio state game a lot of times it's not the ohio state game but we pick a game each week we actually end up picking we actually switch it up we actually pick a time slot now it started to just make more sense that way Mm-hmm. Um, we pick a time slot and we all get into the discord server and we watch some college football together uh, microphones on for the for the sloop cats so we all just get into a big discord server and talk shit for a few hours um, sometimes the games some, sometimes we even watch Ohio State games yeah but don't tell the lawyers um, don't tell the lawyers that <laughs> um, yeah so it's a uh, you never know which time slot we're going to choose and you never know yada 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 but that's a that's a thing you can get for three dollars a month it's and by the way you can pay for an entire year up front that's it's that's less than a cup of coffee oh i hate that don't don't say the cup of coffee (laughs) kyle in this day and age of inflation i said less I said it's I, I less than. I know, I know, I know. In this day and age, in the age of inflation and yada yada yada, what the hell can you buy for three dollars? The Snickers. <laughs> not if you want the not if you want the giant size king sized ones. You can't. I didn't say king size Snickers. I just said Snickers, Jared. Yeah, I know, but I, I was trying to reinforce the point I was making. Can you can't so even I, buy it? So I had you to can't move even the, buy it. Kyle, 
I was trying to reinforce my point, so I moved the goalpost. <laughs> Can't even buy a two liter for under three dollars. <laughs> well, you should stop drinking soda anyway. That's true. <laughs> Here's here's here. That's a that's a real easy thing to just save some money on. Yeah. God, some I don't card. Know why did you just la- chat with a with a? I don't. I was gonna say period, dot. but I think that's a comma. I don't know the last time I bought a two liter for myself. It's been a long, long time. And I'm kind of I'm kind of dragging this out because it's almost the end of the game here, and I really want to say it's official here. Oh, it's. Five five minutes of uh, stoppage time. I might as well say it. the crew beat Cincinnati this weekend too, Jared. Hell is real. Hell is real. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, it breaks up your thoughts. Yeah, but you 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 typed two words and five punctuations. If we're talking, no, there's a space in there. Um, this is this is where I do need you to break up your thoughts with a space. Um, two words and five punctuation marks is a, a very odd ratio. I'm just going to say that. All right, Kyle, that's it. That's the end of the show. Um, tonight's ending music uh, is by a band called Heart Attack Man. Uh, so you can, I believe they... I'm going to say they're in the Northeast. I'm going to say Akron. But I also could be totally wrong because I forget. But the name of the band is Heart Attack Man. So with all that being said, I'd like to uh, encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is Heart Attack Man. Heart Attack Man.